name's George English. I'm the director of Research Through People. And we made this video for those of you who live in Australia or New Zealand, migrated from England to there, either or England or Scotland or from the United Kingdom in particular, either in recent years or more particularly maybe in the 1800s or 1900s. So what I want to do is explain a bit more about how we go about researching um, ancestors like yours and we can do that with talking a bit about what's involved and also give you one or two examples of people we've helped to bring their ancestors to life. We find migration a fascinating thing. Why does anyone leave one place and go somewhere else? And very often it's push factors or things that happen back home that cause the person to leave. Sometimes it's pull, the attraction of a gold rush or something in some other part of the world that attracts people and leads to them leaving their homeland. So let's look at um, what's involved in this. And here's a start with someone um, <clears throat> who we were contacted by this lady from Perth in Australia. And she'd actually done a lot of good work on her Caldau ancestors from Ayrshire. And there we are, Dunlop is in Ayrshire. Andrew had emigrated to Perth in Western Australia. And we can see here with his parents, John Caldau. In fact, he was just 13 when the family emigrated to Victoria um, and they were from Ayrshire, Stuart and Dunlop are in Ayrshire and we trace back um, and there we can see the Caldos back to the uh, 18th century in Kilmarnock um, all of these areas are in Ayrshire. So there we have family in Ayrshire. Now I say she'd done a lot of good work. We looked into this and we managed to find five locations in Ayrshire where the Caldars had lived before they emigrated in 1852. And most of them were rural farm type um, properties. And all five of those places had some of the original buildings there. And that's one of the key things we used to not only bring to life, but we'll tell you in a moment, she actually eventually came over. So let's look at this. There we are, the family in 1841, living in Dunlop. And here are the family, a large family, as you can see, John and Agnes Caldow, farmer, probably a farmer of a few acres, not a great property as such, but with a large family. And uh, you do get the odd smile with these records. You look at James McGurk at the bottom here. His occupation was vagrant. <laughs> I wonder what the pay rate was for that. Anyway, that they're all from Ayrshire, living there and so forth in, in Langton. Now, one of the things we do in these cases is we look at the old maps and they lived in a place called Broomhill. Now, the Ordnance Survey map is dated 1856. This is back before that in the 1830s, in fact. And then we're able to use Google Earth to do an aerial view of that property now. So here we have Broomhill, the original buildings. And over here we have the original buildings. But of course, over the years, there's been developments, there have been farm buildings and so forth. Um, but, you know, the original building was there in that case. Same thing with Course Hill. Again, you can see the building here coming out. Away. Um, here we are, the property, but you can see quite a, a large farm now, a lot of buildings out there, etc. Um, but the original building still there. And Barwinock, again, same case again, you can see there's the house and two farm buildings to the side there and some photos so here's a photo taken head on looking at the house with the two farm buildings to the side another photo taken from the back looking at the end of one of the farm buildings a house in in the, the distance so she came over and three of these houses we knocked on the door and the people said yes we'd be delighted to show her around when she's here and it was lovely for both of them she of course was thrilled to meet the people living in the house they were equally delighted to have someone whose ancestor had lived in their house more than 150 years ago so very much walking in the ancestors footsteps and make a comment here um new zealand christchurch uh, it's very interesting. People very often say that you may know the river in Christchurch is called the Avon, and people assume that it must be based on Stratford-on-Avon. No, not the case. In fact, the Scottish connection here, two brothers called Deans went out to um, Christchurch about the 1840s, and they had a lot of land on the west side of uh, Christchurch. And when I got there, I was puzzled with Kilmarnock, uh, Darvel, Air, a lot of Ayrshire names. Um, uh, and the reason was they actually came from a place, Rickerton, just outside Kilmarnock. Straven, 
And in fact, the Avon water in Christchurch is named after the Avon water, the River Avon, sorry, in Christchurch, Avon water, near Straven in, in Lanarkshire, uh, and because of their connection. And interestingly enough, the, the recent rugby coach, Robbie Deans, is descended from these deans. So a bit of connection that you find between the homeland and Australia or New Zealand. Let's take another case, this case Australia. Moya was born in Melbourne in 1922. Now the case here was in fact, someone was born in Dunedin and given up for adoption and had actually found who her natural mother and father were, had met her natural father, but Moya was her natural mother. Now there were two elements of researching here. One was researching in Australia to see what we could find out about Moya and the other was researching back where she came from in Britain. So we found out all these things. Moya was born in Melbourne, Moya Brunton, her family lived in Victoria for 30, more than 30 years. And then she went across the Dunedin in New Zealand where she met John Goodman, the father and their daughter Joan was born over there in 1951 and given up for adoption. Could we find what happened to Moya? And in due course, it was quite an involved bit of research we found a passenger list with her sailing, Moya Bennett, sailing from London in England out to Australia. She was clearly married and she'd been living in Malaya. Another whole dimension to the story. In the 1970s, her and George Smith, her second husband, were living in Mackens Beach in Queensland and she died there in 2005, age 82. Unfortunately, of course, before our research. And here's a, a note about the sort of sources we use. Excellent source in Australia is Trove, um, but birth wills and so forth. Um, a letter actually of, that a, a family member had. And you can see here a copy of the passenger list that got records her. So a very easy bit of research actually, but we found out about her. Now, what about her parents and what happened? So. We looked at her ancestry. So she's born in Melbourne. We found that, in fact, her father was born in Tasmania. Now, again, the name Rattray uh, suggests Scotland. Um, the mother, in fact, was English, had come from Lancashire and Yorkshire. But the Bruntons, yes, sure enough, going back, Donald Brunton had been born in Campbelltown on the west coast of Scotland and had emigrated to Tasmania, uh, where he married Johanna, who in fact has come from Edinburgh in Scotland, and Donald, his father, William Brunton, was born in the borders. Now, what was interesting, we researched them, and in fact, William Brunton was the rector of Paisley Grammar School for 25 years or so. Schools write histories, and so in the history book, there's a, a picture of William Brunton, and there's the school, and we were able to show um, Joan, a photo of her, her mother. We made contact with the family and so on and so forth. And of course, with that. And she was delighted because, in fact, they had a son, Hamish. Her husband had Scottish ancestry to find that she also had Scottish ancestry in that case. Let's take another case. This is in England. James Shirt is born in Stepney. And this was a part of a, a research, but a very interesting element here. James Shirt, he's born in Stepney in the east end of London, and he emigrates to Sydney and dies there. But what a story. His father was born in Greenwich in the east end of London and going back in time. They were from London, uh, uh, right, Southwark, St. Clement, all in London, etc. So the shirts were there. And then James is born and emigrates to Australia. Hmm. Let's look at this. And basically, he married Eliza Wagland in Stepney in 1872, and they had a son, Daniel, born in Stepney. Then unfortunately, you can see 1886, Eliza died and he remarried Mary Ann Jay and they had five children and emigrated to Australia. Now, what was interesting here, we managed to make contact with descendants of the children and they said, yes, when James died in 1935, he left money to all of his children, including Daniel back in London. But they had no contact, they didn't know where he was, so they weren't able to, to, to in fact, let him have his inheritance. There we were, more than 50 years later, we were able to make that sort of contact. So again, a, a fascinating element of um, people from Britain abroad and what may or may not happen. So 1907 was actually when they emigrated. 
just throw something in here because I have a particular interest here. I have got more than a thousand living relatives in New Zealand and Australia. And the particular branch that uh, is responsible for this is the Luffs and Dobsons. And here we are, the map of South Island in uh, New Zealand. Uh, and in the 1850s, Edward and Mary Dobson uh, and his brother Alfred and Lucy Dobson, who were both Luff, Lucy Luff and Mary Ann Luff were uh, sisters. Edwin was their brother and they went out to New Zealand and they established and there's a lot of things out there, etc. And we've now researched these family uh, extensively and we've found over 3,000 Luff descendants. We've got back to the um, 15th century in England and the Dobson. Here we are with the Luff brothers and sisters, Alfred, Edwin, Mary Ann, Lucy and Alice. And you can see the number of descendants we found for each of them. So Edwin, Mary Ann and Lucy all went out. Over a thousand descendants of Edward Dobson and Mary Ann Luff we knew about. And on the Dobson side, another brother went out to Tasmania in Australia and one stayed in this country. And then a Luff cousin also went out to New Zealand. So got loads of living relatives and obviously from that, I've learned a lot about Australia and New Zealand and equally about England and Scotland and other places where people emigrated from. And if we look at the actual ancestry here, you can see we've actually got four lines back to at least the 1600s, in some cases earlier than that. The Luffs from Cumberland, the Dobsons came from Northumberland, the Collettes from the south of England, uh, and the Barkers from in fact, the Midlands. So, um, yeah, can't guarantee to do as much as that for yourselves, but it's fantastic what can be achieved uh, if, if one wishes. So, very special. Now, you may or may not know that, in fact, in Australia, it's been designated the Year of Scotland in Australia in 2020. And so one of the things we're going to do for 2020 is to give any of you who like to get in touch and ask us to research your ancestors, a 10% introductory discount. If you get in touch, just quote Australia, New Zealand 2020. Here are our contact details, the website for Research Through People. You can email us at info at researchthroughpeople.com. So we look forward to hearing from you and we look forward to helping to bring your ancestors to life and bring you a lot of pleasure. Thank you very much.